my control was just regular tap water and this is before the Mentos went in. This is after the Mentos went in and you can see there's no reaction at all. So now we're just going to test the different sodas reactivity with the Mentos and have some fun. I used regular Mentos mints for this experiment because the surface is really porous and it provides for a lot of nucleation sites for the carbon dioxide and the reaction to occur. I put five mints in each bottle of soda and provided two different recording angles to capture the reactions. Okay, five Mentos. Let's go fast. Mountain Dew, five Mentos. Mountain Dew, five Mentos. Mountain Dew was the least reactive of all the sodas. Orange soda. Mm. Orange soda. Orange soda was just as disappointing as Mountain Dew. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke. Coke Zero. <laughs> Coke Zero. Diet Coke. My original hypothesis was that Diet Coke would produce the greatest reaction with the Mentos. Diet Coke. The force of the reaction was so strong that it knocked over a full cup of soda. Original Coke. Original Coke. Pepsi. Pepsi.
Based on the estimated volume loss and the greatness of the reactions occurred, Diet Coke and Coke Zero had the greatest reaction with the Mentos, and this is probably because they're both made with aspartame rather than natural sweeteners. A study done by Tanya Coffey of Appalachian State University concludes that the surface tension in water with aspartame is lower than in sugary water, which helps the bubbles grow more quickly. One theory as to why this reaction occurs is because of the crater surface of a Mentos mint. The dimply surface disturbs the polar attraction between water molecules, creating nucleation sites for the carbon dioxide bubbles to form. These pictures of a Mentos under scanning electron microscope from the tea coffee dual facility show the rough surface of a Mentos. Well, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed learning about chemical reactions with me and the effects a Mentos mint can have on different sodas. Bye!